beloved Son, the power of the Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten time for us so that we come to Easter with glad hearts and eat the peace and sincerity.
we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent, creating us new and contrite hearts that, lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Joel, the second chapter. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord.
Our epistle lesson is from St. Peter's second letter, the first chapter. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. <clears throat> Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive the others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they just figure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear children of God, I address you as children of God, for don't we all have one Father? Has not one God created us? It's true that we are born as descendants of Adam, children of man, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. But if you have been baptized, you have received the spirit of adoption. If you have been baptized, you are referred to in the Holy Scriptures as members of God's heavenly household. You are part of God's family. As members of the Lord's family, you can count on his love, his grace, and his mercy. God the Father will shelter you with his presence, even in the most difficult of times, like a protective parent comforts and cares for a small child. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Some translations don't say little or small children. But Jesus didn't use a Greek word that merely meant child. Instead, he used a word that means young child or small child. Jesus said, Unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Small children are completely dependent upon their parents for safety and survival. Yet when little children begin to walk, there is a danger that they can stray away from their parents' protection. Small children are apt to chase a ball into the street without looking to see if a car is coming. Apart from a protective parent, a small child is easily lured into danger. Apart from a protective parent, a small child could injure itself by putting something in their mouth that shouldn't be there or putting something in an electrical outlet. There are countless ways a small child can be harmed or harm themselves if the protectant parent is not there with them. There's a reason why people hire babysitters for small children to keep them from being harmed. Simply wandering off into the cold or wandering off into a crowd of people can be dangerous for little children. There are many things in this world that could harm them. If they are to survive, little children need to stay close to their parents. Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Little children are the ones who must stay near their parents. It's the teenagers who gradually venture further and further from home until they eventually are old enough to move out. The Lord indicates that we must be like little children, children who must stay near to God. We are little children who must abide in God's protective presence so we don't fall prey to Satan and his dangerous minions. But like little children who have been enticed by the Pied Piper, little children who are mesmerized by someone dressed in a large furry suit, we have been lured away from the protective presence of our Heavenly Father by the devil, the, the world, and our own sinful flesh. Scripture says that each person is tempted when he is dragged away and enticed by his own desire. So our desires drag us away from the Father into danger. Our own desires drag us away from the Lord like a small child being abducted. The Father has often warned us not to wander off. The Father has called to us through his word, but we have been tempted to be disobedient children, obstinate children, really, like a terrible two-year-old foolishly running away from his loving parents toward danger. Instead of being like a small child in God's household who are content to remain in the presence of our gracious Father, we have been like reckless or rebellious children who have run away from home. And though we have put ourselves in such grave danger by walking or even running away from God, repeatedly sinning, God seeks us out. He calls to us in his word today. Though we have all failed to act like God's holy children, God calls us home into his sheltering presence. Though we have repeatedly sinned and offended our Heavenly Father, he calls to us in his word from the prophet Joel. Yet even now, declares the Lord, 
Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Don't fake it. Don't just look like you're repenting on the outside, but not in your heart. Rend your hearts, and not your garments. True repentance starts within, from the heart, not as a show. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and mercy. He relents over disaster. Though our sins have distanced us from God, he desires that we become close again. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and forgiving. Consecrate a fast. Consecrate the congregation. Set apart these 40 days of Lent as a time to turn away from sin. Instead of drifting away from God, let us draw near to God our Father. Consecrate ourselves. Let us be set apart from sin, remembering our, our baptism as consecrated children of the Heavenly Father. Let us hallow his name, which we bear. Of course, God's name is holy in and of itself, but we pray that God's name will be holy among us. Though we have not always acted like holy children, though we have been lured and enticed by temptation, similar to the way that King David was lured and enticed into sin. Though that has happened to us, we, like King David, also can confidently plead for mercy. In our psalm today, King David prayed that the Lord's gracious presence would not be taken from him. Even though he had sinned terribly against God in thought, word, and deed, the Lord granted David's prayer for mercy. He granted him the forgiveness and renewal that he asked for. And because of the saving work of Jesus on the cross, he promises to grant our prayers for mercy as well. God has mercy on us according to his steadfast love, according to the love that he's already displayed for us on the cross. He looks at us as a father looks to his own dear children. According to his abundant love for us, he blots out our transgressions does so with his own precious blood. He doesn't leave us stranded in our sins. No, he has mercy. He's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and mercy. He cleanses us and draws us close to him so that we will be protected from the evil one who has been trying to lure us away. Like he did with David, so also with us. He recreates in us clean hearts and renews a right spirit within us. He does not cast us away from his presence, but instead he draws us near. He, he draws us close and renews the Holy Spirit in us through the means of grace, the word and the sacrament. In the midst of it all, he even restores us the joy of his salvation, upholds us with the willing spirit. He gives us a willing spirit that moves us to serve in his kingdom, staying close to him, which results in others also coming into his gracious presence. God has mercy on you today. God forgives you your sins. He cleanses you. He makes you holy and consecrates you for service in his abiding presence. So like King David, we also teach transgressors his ways. God blesses us with forgiveness and renewal so that others also may be blessed with forgiveness and renewal so that even more sinners will return to God. God grant to each of us such a renewal. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Your abundant mercy blot out our transgressions for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who was crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Preserve the proclamation of his cross among us and guard your church from every false teaching. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. renew in us this penitential season to strive against the desires of the flesh and to grow in the joy of your salvation. Draw us close to you, O Lord. Equip us and give us willing hearts that will eagerly serve in various capacities for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, look graciously upon the families of our congregation. Defend your holy estate of marriage against every enemy that would divide. Strengthen parents for their duties, especially bringing up their children in the fear and instruction of the Lord. And preserve us all in the faith till the end. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, look with mercy and compassion upon all those who are sick or suffering. Give peace to those who are near death along with their families and comfort those who are mourning with joyful expectations of the resurrection. Comfort us all who are dust and must return to dust with your promise that a broken and contrite heart we will not despise. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless us, Heavenly Father, on this holy day of repentance. As we enter the least season of Lent, let us hold fast to your word. Teach us to die to self and serve you faithfully throughout our this mortal life until at last you bring us with the blessed saints into your presence forevermore. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship of the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.